German. German? The girl has a German newspaper. Germans here? Why not? There are half a million of us in Canada. Vogel, go and speak to us. See what you can find out. Don't try to be too clever. Keep as near to the truth as you can. Hello. Mm. Hello. That's a good-looking scarecrow. Mm. Why, you're only a kid. I thought you were much older than that get up. I'm 16. Are you looking for work? Yes. How did you know? You don't look like a hobo. Reaping started? Just begun. Are you on your own? Oh, those. Those are my pals. All right. I thought they were your pals. Why? Seasonal workers always travel in gangs. Well, these are my pals. Uh, this is... Anna. Anna. She's 16. It isn't true. I shouldn't lie. I shall be 16 the day after tomorrow. Well, it's only a difference of two days. Yes, but Peter says there's no difference at all between a small lie and a big lie. Who is Peter? Our leader. Oh, so you have a leader? Yes, a wonderful leader. You'll meet him. Aren't you coming to the settlement? There isn't another for eight miles. I told you we were looking for work. We should be glad to, but uh, there are four of us. Don't worry. When 111 people sit down for supper, four more won't make any difference. Did you say 111? 39 brothers, 47 sisters, and 25 children. Hmm. What are you? Mormons? Mormons? No, Hutterites. <laughs> I didn't mean we were all one family. We're only brothers and sisters in God. Anna, more bread for our guests. Sorry about the bread. Mmm. I know a bit about baking. I don't mind my saying so, he was getting a new baker. We had a good one, but he went to Small Springs. Mm. Better pay? Pay? Oh, no, no one gets paid here. Does anyone get paid anything? No. Oh, what do you work for, then? Just a keep? No, for us all. Look, all these people work for nothing. Yes. Yeah. What sort of work? Whatever suits them best. Well, what do you mean? They don't choose themselves, do they? Haven't you got a leader of the community? Yes, there he is, over there. Well, which is your leader? There. Third from the right. Well, doesn't he tell the people what sort of job they've got to do? Well, no, we tell him what we want to do. And how could he be your leader? How do you mean? Well, Anyone works at whatever job they like, then. Yes, that's right. If somebody can make shoes, he makes shoes. If he wants to be a blacksmith, he works in the forge. If somebody feels he can preach, well, he preaches. Oh, what's your specialty? I'm the baker. When you sell your stuff in Winnipeg, what happens to the money? We buy new tractors, build houses, found new settlements. We've just founded a new one over at Small Springs. And if someone leaves you and then wants to come back, don't you punish them? Punish? Yes, don't you send them to a camp or something? Camp? Why a camp? No, we just take them back because our religion tells us to. The Hutterite religion, the Christian religion. Is it one of your rules to sing like this? We haven't any rules. We sing because we like to. It's good for the digestion. 
Good night. The leader will look after you. Thank you. What's the salute? The what? Don't you give the leader a salute? <laughs> Good evening, friends. Good evening. On behalf of my friends and myself, I have to thank you for your kindness in giving us food and shelter. You're welcome. I hear you come from up north in the woods, or down north, as we call it here. Yes. Just come out? Last week. Are you Germans? I ask, are you Germans? Yes. Are you ashamed of it? Of course not. I'll show you where to sleep. Thank you. Most of us are Germans. You may find some from the same part of the old country as yourselves. Anna, I thought you would have told them all about us. Well, we mostly discuss birthdays. <laughs> well, it's quite an event with our 16th birthday. It means that one has grown up at last. Come in, please. This house belonged to Hugo Waldner. One of our brothers who's gone to the new settlement. A small frame. Yes. You see, we are like bees. If we get too many, we set out to swarm. So the house is empty and at your service. Good night. Sleep well. Good night. Hmm. That's what I call a busy girl. That's nothing. I make 14 beds every night. And that's a lot of work. You see, we have a lot of men who have no mothers and who aren't married yet. So somebody has to make their beds. Quite right. Two of you can sleep in here, and there are two more beds in the other room. Where do you sleep? In Peter's house. In Peter's house? But I don't make the bed for him. Poor Peter. Why not? Because he has a mother to look after him. Haven't you a mother? No. She was drowned. Drowned? In the sea. When we left Germany, we went to England. Because we had to wait until we got a permit to come to Canada. We got our permit after war was declared. Was your father with you? Wait a minute. I want to hear about her mother. Her ship was sunk. Torpedo? I think so. Don't you know? Was there a big explosion? <laughs> Shut up, you two. You and your questions. Don't answer them, Anna. Oh, leave that. Run along now. I'll take her home. All right. You take her. Good night, Anna. Good night. Chin's up. Remember then, do nothing without orders. Discipline is more important now than ever. So far, luck has been with us. There's a great stroke of fortune being here at all. I do you think they're friendly, Herr Leutnant? Friendly? Yes. But you saw how their leader tried to draw us out. Are you Germans? Are you ashamed of being Germans? That in a country with which we're at war. There can only be one answer to that. Our agents have done their work well. Yes, this religion may be nothing but a cover. I bet they sing the hospital song better than hymns. We shall see that tomorrow. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Shut the door. Well, Fogel, who knows? Perhaps one day the story of our adventures will all be written in a book. In a few years' time, it may be the basis of compulsory lectures to the Hitler youth. The ships we sank, with women and children aboard. The lifeboats we shelled. Mm, we were good at that. What we did to the Eskimos at the post. The unarmed men we shot in the back. You forget Fogel, we're at war. You can't expect to win without the methods of total warfare. Men, women and children, they're all our enemies and must be treated as such. You never read what Bismarck said. Leave them only their eyes to weep with. Leave them only their eyes to weep with. Did he say that? Those were his actual words in the War of 1870. You should study Bismarck. 
He was a great German. A great German. You know, Fogel, I'm worried about you. You're a good fellow, but you don't discipline yourself. You give way to emotions. That'll land you in trouble one of these days. Why don't you take an example from Kranz? A fine soldierly fellow. You could be just as good a Nazi as he is if you tried. Are you listening, Fogel? Yes, Herr Leutnant. Then think it over. Yes, Herr Leutnant. And get out of bed and turn up the light. Yes, Herr Leutnant. Fogler. Herr Leutnant? Either of you seen Fogel? No, Herr Leutnant. We'll get dressed at once. asking for you. Huh? All right. Well, aren't you going? Well, I can't go till I've got this lot ready. What shall I tell him? Oh, I'll be long in a minute. Now, where's this new baker I hear about, eh? Now, that's what I call brain. Yes. You'll have to teach David the trick. Trick or no trick, I could never make bread as good as that. Mm, cheer up, David. It took me seven years. Why did you want to give it up? Well, I didn't want to give it up. I had to. You see, we all had Peter, just come and look at this bread. Good morning, friend. Mr. Fogel is the best baker we've had here in 15 years. I can't imagine why his last boss let him go. Must have been crazy. He wasn't then, he is now. Congratulations, Fogel. It was a good idea. What's the news in Winnipeg? The market was good for geese. People are asking for Hutterite geese. I don't like that, Andreas. No? For 300 years, our brethren have wandered from place to place, from country to country, because of the jealousy of others. This is a good country, Andreas. I met Frau Haberman. Yes? Oh, her trial was on today, wasn't it? Her husband and her eldest son, Erich, are to be interned. She's free. Bad luck. Just at harvest time. Wasn't a good day for the trial. Papers are full of stories about those Germans who landed from a U-boat down north. They seem to have acted like wild beasts, killing and stealing. What's Frau Habermann going to do? I had a talk with her. She needs help on the farm. Oh, it'll be difficult. We'll talk it over. Tell the others we'd have a meeting tonight, yes? Air's yes, heavy. Afraid we are going to have a storm tonight. 
Sorry, sorry I'm late, Peter. Barbarina, there's an electric storm playing all around us, frightening the animals and your chickens. Move over, Philip. What about you, Anna? Andreas, huh? one of our guests is speaking. Eh? What? Oh, good. We were discussing the Habermans. I was about to say, you have one clear choice. Where there is a question of blood, where one is governed by the deepest of racial instincts, then every other consideration is swept aside. Men like yourself, German or of German ancestry, rise up with all the might and power of the great German people behind you, conscious of the sacred duty that binds us all together and in the knowledge that he who does not forget his people will not by his people be forgotten. There is a new wind blowing from the east, a great storm coming across the sea, a hurricane which will sweep aside all the old outmoded ways of life and mark the beginning of a new order not only for Europe, but for the whole world. Let those beware who would have the temerity to stand in its way. They will go down before his irresistible impulse and be crushed out of existence. But for those who accept the new order, for those who perhaps belong to it already, why need I use these parables of speech any longer? I mean, all of you here tonight. Yes, you, brothers. I call you brothers and proudly acknowledge you as such. You who formed the little stronghold of our people here in Canada, you will have your share of the happiness and prosperity that is waiting for us all. When the storm is over and the sun rises, that mighty sun, which will give us everything we need in life. What sun are you talking about, friend? I am talking of the greatest idea in history. The supremacy of the Nordic race, the German people. I am talking of the being whose name I am certain lives in every heart, whose name hangs on all our lips whether we can shout it to the world or only whisper it in one another's ears. Germans! Brothers! I ask you to join with me in paying homage to our glorious Führer, Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! I don't ask where you come from or what brought you here. Although you've left us in no doubt as to your beliefs. Someone has given you, no doubt deliberately, a completely false impression of us. We are only one amongst many foreign settlements in Canada. There are thousands of them in this part of the world. And they've been founded some recently, some 80 years ago by people who left their homes in Europe because of famine, because of starvation, because of racial and political persecution, and some, like ourselves, because of their faith. Some came only to find new land, new boundaries, a new world. But all have found here in Canada the security, peace, and tolerance, and understanding which in Europe it is your furious pride to have stamped out. You call us Germans. You call us brothers. Yes, most of us are Germans. Our names are German, our tongue is German, our old handwritten books are in German scripts. But we are not your brothers. Our German is dead. However hard this may be for some of us older people, it's a blessing for our children. Our children grow up against new backgrounds, new horizons. And they are free. Free to grow up as children. Free to run and to laugh without being forced into uniforms, without being forced to march up and down the streets singing battle songs. 
You talk about a new order in Europe. The new order. Where there will not be one corner, not a hole big enough for a mouse, where a decent man can breathe freely. You think we hate you, but we don't. It is against our faith to hate. We only hate the power of evil which is spreading over the world. You and your Hitlerism are like the microbes of some filthy disease, filled with a longing to multiply yourselves until you destroy everything healthy in the world. No. We are not your brother. What do you want? I've come to tell you that you can make your own beds. I don't want to work for you. That's all right, Anna. Run along now. You're an Nazi, aren't you? Aren't you? We are not allowed to hate anybody. But I hate you. I believe you've escaped from an internment camp. I should tell the police about you. You killed my father because he said your Führer was the Antichrist. You drowned my mother. I hate you. I hate you. Now you're going to tell the police about us, are you? Little girls should be seen and not heard. That'll do. What's the matter with you? That'll do! Vogel! Come along, Anna. I'll take you home. Herr we can't let them go. I'd like to see what you're going to do about it. Oh, no. Yes, Herr Leutnant. Have you forgotten who you are? No, Herr Leutnant. Let the girl go and shut the door. I'll take her home, Herr Leutnant. Is that you, Anna? Yes, Peter. I brought Anna home. She's all right. We're going now, perhaps in a few minutes. I only wanted to say that you've been kind and I like it here. You like my bread and I like the way you live. Being with you has made me feel like it used to be at home. I'd almost forgotten what it was like. Baking bread, doing my real work. That's how it used to be seven years ago before everything changed. The life I've been living seems to have no sense in it now. Well, I'd better go now. Please, don't go. Are they still talking? Hush, child. Go to sleep. How can a man like you, Fogel? I mean, you're a simple, good human being. How can you get mixed up with such a lot of gangsters? What can you do? When you're a boy, you like playing soldiers. When you're a young man, you can't get work unless you belong to them. When you're an old man, you're anxious not to lose what you've got. But there are thousands of men like you, Fogel. Men who don't like the way things are going. I suppose so. I suppose they don't know themselves. I didn't know. It's as if a blind man said he doesn't know the sun shines. I suppose so. Why don't you stay with us, Fogel? Do you mean it? Of course I mean it. Even if you know who I am, 
where I come I from. I don't care who you are, where you come from. I know you. Thank you, Peter. It will mean internment. What's it matter? I'll come back after the war. This is your home. General Martivisa Fogel. You are under arrest. You are accused of desertion and treachery to the Third Reich. In the absence of a properly constituted court, I assume authority as your superior officer and sentence you to death. Have you anything to say? The sentence will be carried out immediately, in the name of the Führer.